Welcome everyone, good evening and thank you very much for joining us uh, today. Hope you're enjoying your summer at the moment. I've already been up um, at 6am this morning and went to the gym and it was a nice snuggly 44 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so hopefully you're experiencing slightly warmer weather than that. Uh, we've obviously got you all on mute so that there's no not too much background noise and that you can hear us okay. But the great thing about Zoom is it does have that chat function. And we want this um, hour to be as useful and constructive for you as possible. So please um, feel free to use that chat function to ask any questions or ask us to clarify anything along the way. But I'd also love to know whereabouts you're tuning in from at the moment. So please let us know in the chat as well. So to introduce myself, first of all, my name is Adam Barrelay. Um, I've been working with essential oils in a different capacity for the last 25 years or so. Um, and also was blessed to grow up here in Perth, Western Australia, um, in the bush. And so nature has always been a rather key component of my life. Um, and as I grew up, you know, in those tricky teenage years and so on, instead of locking myself in my room, I was normally somewhere out in the bush. And that's where I found my solace and that type of thing. I became introduced um, to doTERRA six years ago, thanks to Vanessa. And from then, you know, I, I use the oils amazingly to help me with my physical well-being and things like eczema and hay fever and stuff like that. Um, but obviously having that strong connection to nature, soon the oil started to speak to me on deeper levels as well. So um, December last year, Vanessa and I released our book, Gifts of Essential Oils. And basically we wanted to, to theme today's class around that book, but also about what you were looking for as um, you go through the second half of 2020. So um, that's a little bit about myself. I'll hand over to Vanessa to introduce herself. Hey, everyone. It's so good to see you all here. So my journey began when I was um, young with my family, quite young, being in an Italian family, Italian and Maltese, and making everything from scratch and feeling really deeply connected with Mama Gaia. So the years progressed, and like Adam said, challenges arise, and I learned how to kind of rise up and reach out with Gaia by my side, with Mother Nature by my side. And that that was broad spectrum so that was whole foods and making things from scratch it was meditating outdoors and being with her and connecting with her and slowly as I came to understand a little more um, each time I, I connected with her I learned to surrender and to just fall into her arms during times of, of trials and tribulations and of course essential oils came into my life at around the time when I was about 15 and going through some difficulties and I'm now 45. So they've been in my life a long time. And today what I'd really love to invite you to do is to open your hearts and get your fingers typing to share with us maybe some of the things that you would like to learn how to rise up out of, you know, to dissolve the stuff that doesn't serve you, whether that's an internal um, challenge or um, whether you feel like you just need to learn to extend yourself outwards in that place of surrender to really lean in to what Mother Earth has because I believe that that Mother Earth or Gaia as we call her Gaia has everything we need I honestly believe that I believe that she's part of that divine spark and we can lean into her so it's it's a small group live with us right now we can get quite intimate we can explore blends we can explore um, you know this book <laughs> this amazing book has over a hundred essential oils in it and we have some beautiful ways to use correspondences like crystals which is another one of Adam's jams, you know, they're part of the earth as well. And cacao, like, which is one of my, my joys. So let me briefly tell you before we launch in with this book, you'll notice, how many of you have our book? Just note it, just write in the comments below. Yeah, yay, Bonnie's brought hers with her. So, and Claire's waving. So for those that have her, yay, thank you, Claire. You might want to just um, have her by your side. For those that don't, order her from oillife.com and she'll land at your doorstep. And I feel like you'll be forever grateful because this is definitely, I feel like, you know, Mama Guy needs to be on authorship there with Adam and I because she's our inspiration. She's so our muse. Now, you'll notice as you turn the pages of this beautiful book that 
the alphabetical order is in sections, yeah? And each of the sections is broken into five magical, beautiful elements that you can really dance with and play with. We have earth, fire, air, water, and the fifth element that often people, you know, don't lean into as much, learning to though, is Akasha, that beautiful spirit realm. The realm of the miraculous, of going deep and of rem remembering that everything we need is within us. So each of those elements are progressively shared through the book and within those elements, that's where you'll find the alphabetical order. Now, as you find essential oils that maybe, you know, doTERRA doesn't have as a single note, you'll notice they often come through in their, their beautiful blends, their synergistic blends. Like Whisper, of course, has the rose and the jasmine and sandalwood. But she also has in that beautiful melody, vanilla and cacao absolutes, both of those absolutes. So we have them in here, two pages for each of them, so that you can learn more about the blends with those in them. Yeah, vanilla appears in quite a few. So when you feel like, oh my gosh, I've read that and I really want to connect with that particular essential oil and doTERRA doesn't have that oil, fear not. Just remember that these are vibrations, pure vibration, and Mama Gaia is all around us. She's just all around us. So you can just tune in to the particular gifts that you would love to lean into um, and allow yourself to call the energy of that particular plant or part of the plant in and the gifts in. Why am I talking about the gifts? This is why, because each each part of the plant that we focus on, for instance, marjoram, has three key words. Then it says, my gift to you is, there's a beautiful practice to participate in, the affirmations, and three gorgeous blends. And with all of that, the heart and soul right here goes through part of the, the story, the history, the lore, where marjoram came from, how she came into being right? Some of the gifts she brings written here so that you can lean into her and learn different ways to use it. The practice is something you can do and we'll, we'll share some of those today in the comfort of your own home. Yeah. It's something that you can bring into your daily life. We're huge believers in bringing that rhythm and ritual into your life. And this book definitely covers it. So without further ado, Let's dive in. Adam, go for it. So basically we wanted to look at different ideas to help you, sorry, I'm just trying to sort something out. Two of my members can't get on at the moment. We'll try and help them out. Okay, um, I, we wanted to help you. You know, humans are interesting beings. We're one of the very few living organisms on this earth that will kind of go, now nah, I'll stop growing. You know, a tree or a plant will never stop trying to expand itself, grow new leaves and different things like that. An animal never goes, oh, no, I've bred enough or oh, I've eaten enough. I'll just chill out and that type of thing. Every animal and every other living creature on this earth is always trying to expand itself. Whereas humans, at some point, we get, you know, we get into our, our late 20s, our 30s, our 40s. At some point, you know, sometimes it's even earlier, we're like, I'm done. I'm not going to try it. I, I, I'm comfortable where I am. I don't want to expand myself. But what you'll see is we, we almost sit there and watch television of all the other people in the world that are getting out there and expanding themselves. So today we want to wake up within you a, a bit of an essence of how can I start to grow a little bit more, to rise up, reach out, whether that be on a personal level, on a business level, on a financial level, a relationship level, a spiritual level, any level in that type of way. And you may be sitting here listening to me going, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know. I'm not too sure. So if that's the kind of case for you and you're not too sure where you kind of want to um, step out in the world, let me offer three different oils for you. Now, the first one is thyme. Thyme essential oil is probably one that many people have sitting in their little collection in their box doesn't smell the nicest and they're not too sure what to do with it. Apart from it being amazing for um, immune support, 
What I love about time is time goes looking for unresolved issues that hold us back in the past. What's holding you back? Sometimes we know, and sometimes we don't realise. And I find if people that smell time and they're like, hmm, I'm not too keen on that, it normally suggests that there's something there, it may not be at the forefront, but it's been lingering. And maybe it was something that happened in childhood or 10 years or 20 years. I'm just kind of buried that. And what time will do, if we start to work with time on a regular basis, it's like a big hand and it reaches deep within our soul and helps to drag it out. Now, obviously, if you don't like the smell of time, how can we use that every day to work with that? Well, what we can do is we can put it on the soles of our feet at night, mixing it with some fractionated coconut oil or the rose hand lotion, and then rubbing it on the soles of your feet. And slowly, its chemistry will start to dance with your chemistry and bring things up. Another, now, this is when, when Vanessa spoke about the sections, we've actually divided the oils into the sections, the different elements, and that's based on whereabouts on the plant, the tree, or the tree, the oil is gifted from. So we talked about the air element. The air element is about the mind and intellect and realizations. And what we've found is any oil that comes from the leaf of a plant or a tree, such as thyme, or lemongrass, or eucalyptus, or Siberian fir, or so many others, these somehow bring some type of focus to the mind, or insight to the mind, or revelation to the mind. Time brings to our awareness things that are holding us back and stopping us going forward. Other oils that can help us when we are kind of shackled in some type of way can be juniper berry and black pepper. Now these are associated with the element of fire, and because they are from the fruit of a plant. Now, often we think about the fruits, oh, it's all the citruses, and they're about all the joy and the happiness and going forward and that type of thing. Whereas black pepper and juniper berry goes deep into the cave and helps to drag things up again and go, okay, what's stopping me from growing in this type of way? So, what we'd love to know, um, and I'll get Vanessa to maybe guide you through a bit of a... Um, a a meditation or a thought process, whatever she's feeling today, is what's holding you back and where do you want to be? We're now at the midpoint of 2020 and wow, it's been an interesting year. But instead of just going, oh, we're halfway through the year, that God already didn't that fly, we've still got half a year left. What would you like to achieve in this year? What would you like to turn around on December 31st, 2020 and go, I'm really glad I did that. I'm so proud I did that. And it may be on a personal level. It may be, you know, it may be a certain money saved in the bank account. It might be a new relationship. It might be a new job. It might be, who knows? The world is your oyster. But I'll hand over to Vanessa to kind of guide you through that process. And then we'll see if we can custom make some different oils and some different blends that will help you in that situation. Vanessa. Thanks, darling. All righty. So... If you have an oil by you, if you'd like to just select one of them and undo the lid and take a deep breath. And if you don't have an oil, just close your eyes and take a deep breath and call in the energy of an essential oil, part of the plant that you'd like to bring to you now. It can be a touch, it can be just pure oil. Just take a full deep breath, feel your belly rise and your rib cage open and expand with the life force. Allowing yourself to feel, and become aware of how you feel as you inhale this essential oil or blend and where you feel it journey in your body. Become really aware of where you feel that essential oil journey in your body. Which part of your body does it touch? Which part of your body is responding deeply? Which parts? Just inhale. Pause for a moment at the end of that inhalation and exhale. 
Just letting your body relax. You can place the essential oil down. Just coming into your breath. Inhale. Exhale, eyes closed. Fully aware. And now I'd like you to just plug into, just become aware of this year so far and the immediate response that emerges from your body. What emotions arise? What thoughts are arising? And just be aware of them. Just observe them. Not engaging in the story of them. Just simply be aware. And notice where those thoughts and emotions and feelings that are being generated right now, where they live in your body. Do you feel churning in your belly, in your heart, in your mind? Do you feel warmth anywhere? Do you feel surrender? Do you feel grief, anger, frustration, confusion? Do you feel peace? Be aware and now bring your awareness to this moment right now in your breath take a deep breath in inhaling the love of the divine of creator of mother earth inhaling that love receiving that love just pause at the end of that in breath and release the breath One more inhalation, deep, deep inhalation. Feel your body rise with that beautiful inhalation. Your rib cage open and expand. Just pause and get yourself ready to, as you exhale, release tension, old stories, these feelings. Just release it with the exhalation. And it's really helpful to just, ah, uh, just a little bit of sound with it. Just release. Inhale. Exhale. And becoming aware now of the you that you choose to be in this moment in time in the future. And how you're choosing to step forward into the remainder of this year. How do you look? How do you feel? How do you walk in the world? Bring in as much detail and attention as you can. Smiling faces, snuggling up with your family and those you love. Maybe you want to bring in some energy of creation that you're dancing with, you're writing, you're drawing maybe, you're dancing, you're walking in nature. Something that you've been wanting to birth into being, a book, course, program, just feeling all of that come in. Maybe for you it is the manifestation of complete stillness in your mind and in your heart, deep peace and in your belly, empowerment. Remember, it is the simple things that are most profound. So just call it all in without judgment. Who is it you choose to be moving forward? How do you choose to live and be in the world? Become aware now of intentions you have for the remainder of this year to rise up as the new you, the true you, the amazing light being 
of love that you are. Becoming aware of these intentions that sing deeply into your heart. The light you up. That expand you. And fill you up. just picking up that essential oil or blend that you had try to keep your eyes as closed as possible if you need to find the oil just little slits undo the lid and inhale deeply again and anchor your vision of who you are and how you be and live in this world and your intentions for the remainder of this year inhaling that essential oil to create an aromatic anchor this now. So that that essential oil assists you to return to this place of peace and creation energy anytime you choose. Inhale. Pause the inhalation, that end of that in-breath, just pause and exhale. Now inhale with all the gratitude you can muster for this vision, for the joy you have feeling it, for the love you have of you being you, the love you have of this divine creator energy. Feel the joy of it, of you living this in its fullness. This vision, this you, and let your heart rise and expand in gratitude. Now wrap that vision up in your gratitude, wrap it up in all the gratitude, the love and the joy that you can muster and surrender it now. Surrender that beautiful vision to the universe. And something simple I like to say is may thy will be done. May thy will be done. I call in the miraculous to bless my life. I call on this vision of my heart to come in the most unexpected of ways. And I consciously say yes and choose. To live in this way. With inspired action and open heart and a grateful being. Take a deep breath. And release the breath. When you're ready, just open your eyes. Welcome back. A whole new you. A whole new 2020 approaching you at least in your own inner world. If you could just type some of your intentions in the chat for us and some of what you're consciously choosing to call in and we can start to dance with some blends and essential oils. So a blend so that... Oh, sorry, go for it, Adam. Sorry, I thought you were pausing. Continue, Vanessa. I was just going to say a blend that I really felt come in um, that I just want to touch on for a moment was marjoram, rose, arborvitae and geranium. And geranium is not one I play with a lot. Like I need to, to kind of want her and it really is dependent on what part of my cycle I'm in. But she's incredible for helping to dissolve this energy of anger and frustration and to come back into our heart, into our self-love, which is so where we need to be right now to generate more of that so that that goes out into the world. When we're in a place of that, we show up as that and we bring that to the world. She brings this beautiful harmony. That's why she's so beautiful at harmonizing our hormones, right? 
So she brings this harmony and then Rose, you know, amplifying that, amplifying everything in this blend to take it up, increase the vibration of us, the planet, the blend itself into the realms of unconditional love, right? Into that space where we know that the miraculous blesses us deeply and our Bavite aligns us with that divine assistance that's always there waiting for us to lean in, to sink into, right? And then Marjoram, to release any grief. She brings that tenderness, that holding point, and helps us to focus on that which we actually choose to bring forth into our life rather than focusing on what doesn't serve us. So I just wanted to share those four that came in. Go for it, Adam. It was interesting because as you're doing the meditation, I wanted to, I was like, oh, I want, um, I'll touch on geranium as well. So, you know, in our, in our book, we have that each oil offers a gift and the gift that geranium offers is equilibrium. And in this turbulent 2020 where there is so much happening in different things, it always, it, it feels almost that we're all as individuals fighting to survive or fighting to thrive and fighting to get ahead in that type of thing as well. However, what Geranium teaches us is that when we can find an equilibrium between all people, rather than me versus you or you versus me and us versus them, how can we find harmony? It's about us all moving forward together in that type of way. Now, one of the things that Geranium helps us with, because being a flower oil, each of the flower oils, the action of a flower is to open. And so each of the flower oils opens us up to something different. And geranium opens us up to trust. To trust not only ourselves, but to trust other people. And at the moment, there's, you know, I feel these levels of distrust for different people that, oh, no, you stay over there and I'll do what I want to do and all that type of thing. And, and it doesn't seem to be working so well. So geranium is a great one. Now, whether geranium is used for helping you to trust a new partner because of you've been hurt in the past and that type of thing, or trust someone who's hurt you in the past. It doesn't mean that you just open your heart and go, oh, well, whatever happens, happens, that type of thing. But it's about trusting that people, I think at the core essence of every individual, is good intention. And geranium helps us bring that back. Geranium's also been used throughout the centuries to bring equality. So whether we were looking at gender rights, sexuality rights, religious rights, race rights, whatever rights you want type of thing, Geranium actually works to balance that out and can be absolutely magical in that way. Now, the other flower oil that also came to me that I just wanted to touch on is neroli. Now, there is a myth that says that um, nature spirits, nature um, nymphs, would use the aroma of neroli to seduce young men and women out of their bedchamber at night into the forest. And I love, the, first of all, I love the picture of that and the idea of that. But I also love the symbology of that. That neroli is a seductive oil and it has been used, it's been scattered, you know, orange blossoms and the, the essential oil and the hydrosol have been used to, um, you know, scatter over newlywed beds to help brides relax on their first night. It's been used by Cleopatra to seduce Mark Antony with a bit of jasmine. It's been used by women of the night to try and get them more clients as well. But not just in that central kind of way, but neroli does, it beckons us out, out of our comfort zone. If, if we've got any Aquarians on it, it's an Aquarian oil. And what it does is it beckons us to think outside the square. What else is there in that type of thing? So may, imagine if you were to work with geranium and neroli to trust that there's new and exciting things out there and that there can be revolutions and there can be improvements on a global scale and on a, on a personal scale as well. So those two oils, I too, that I just felt I wanted to talk about a little bit. But let's have a look at what you've got in your chat. I'll hand over to you, Vanessa. You've probably been reading up. I'm just catching up on it all. Um, yeah, Bonnie, I just want to feel into this for a minute. Clarity with my intuition, knowing where to go next with my purpose of teaching others how to heal themselves. It's beautiful. I mean, I think a lot of us can relate to that, you know, tapping into intuition with clarity and focus that direction and reminding others that they can heal themselves. It's powerful, right? You'd love more of that. So an oil that's coming to me for you is Litsia. 
in this and I feel like Litzia wants to come and play and dance in this melody because Litzia reminds us that everything we have is within us, right? We can renew, we can regenerate, we can dance this life any way we choose. And when we do it with joy, right, with that joyous energy, with laughter, a lot shifts and changes. So laughter is an incredible dispersant. It'll disperse fear in a moment, right? But it will also act as a dispersant to allow what you're bringing into the world to infuse into the world, right? To just scatter it out, to send it out into the world. It works really beautifully with our upper chakras, the crown chakra, for instance, to allow ourselves to trust and open to connect, to see clearly, to see what actually is before us and beyond our fearscape. The gift that... Um, Litzia brings his laughter and I just want to share with you the reminder again that each of these beautiful pages has a practice on them and we took a lot of time with these practices and the one for Litzia actually tells you in takes you into that crown chakra so maybe you want to look at that funny and some beautiful oil there are lots of oils you can you can blend with the litzia or work just with litzia on on litzia's own you know just for the magic of litzia but what i felt come through for you was um, roman chamomile hawaiian sandalwood and arbor vitae with the litzia yeah so you can go deeply into those take off the lids Ladies, gents, notice how you feel as soon as you inhale the essential oil because that's going to speak deeply into you, the message that this part of the plant wants to bring to you. Notice how you feel and where you feel them journey. So you can, how you can use these oils is wide and varied. One is just take the lids off and inhale them. Never underestimate the value and the depth and breadth of the gift that comes to you just from inhalation. You can also do that with the diffuser, have it going into your, your sacred space, your beautiful home, your, your workspace, your creation space. Something else that's really powerful is getting them on the body, right? So there's a couple of things to touch on here. One is, is you can take your bowl and place your carrier oil in it with a couple of drops of each of those essential oils and massage it just self-lovingly, yummily, rub it over your body, massage it into your body in place of like moisturizers. Yeah, so we call this aromatic dressing. And the reason I wanted to bring aromatic dressing to the world was because as you touch your body lovingly and affirm to yourself how magnificent you are, you're changing your chemistry, you're changing your response in the world. So for you, Bonnie, it's around, I am so grateful that my intuition is switched on and I'm open to receiving the signals and messages of my intuition. Then you can take that litzia, a little drop in your hand, breathe it in, and you can just anoint your crown and then massage it and zhuzh it kind of through your hair like this, right? And when I said to you, notice how you feel and where you feel it go, the reason, another reason is because it can give you ideas on connection points for layering. Layering with essential oils is so powerful, right? You can enhance their effect as you layer as well. You can place them on different meridians, different chakra points. So if you felt like you wanted to layer two oils, let's say um, the neroli that Adam just spoke about, with that litzia, so you've placed some litzia on your crown maybe, and maybe you felt you just want to put some litzia on your wrist so you could be inhaling that aroma. So you just give that a moment to dry, to seep in, to enter in, and then you take the neroli and you layer that on top of the layer, that's the layering. So you've layered with litzia, then you layer again with neroli and let that permeate and let yourself create an anchor with now what happens when those two come together what synergies they bring in, the chemistry that's enhanced to alter your mood state, to change your thought stream, yeah, to change the way you be in the world. So remember that the, the practices that you undergo in your life, the rituals you bring in, take you to a new level. Adam, did you want to work with another one? Yeah, so one thing, you know, when it comes to working with essential oils, remember that no matter even if we find the perfect oil to match your situation, I want you to think of oils 
as your friends. They're not your staff. They're not going to do it for you. What they do is they support you in that work. So it's definitely very much about taking, you know, finding things that will support you in you actually taking that first step forward. And so a couple of other oils I wanted to talk about around in this theme. One is your product of the month in North America, which is fennel. And what I love about fennel, the gift that fennel gives us is that gift of choice. Now, a couple of hundred years ago, only 5% of the population relied on someone else for their income. Whereas today, around 95% of people rely on someone else for their income and thus their general basic well-being and fulfilling their basic needs. And what has happened throughout that time has been a transition and a handover of responsibility. So what tends to happen in the general population is this tendency to think, well, I am where I am, but it's not my fault. It's my boss's fault. It's my parents' fault. It's my government's fault. It's my kid's fault. It's my partner's fault. It's, you know, the, the divine's fault. It, it's someone else's fault in that type of thing. And what fennel does, each of the seeds takes us back to a core power that exists within us. And when we can utilize and unlock that power, it allows us to then become, you know, just like a seed allow is that potentiality to become a great plant. That's what the seeds unlock in us. Fennel reminds us that we have the power of choice. If you don't like where you are today, make a different choice. And if that's the wrong choice, guess what we do? We make another choice as well. When we decide to make choices ourselves, we take responsibility back for our well-being in our life as well. And, you know, responsibility has a bit of a harsh, a bit of a negative connotation. Maybe as children, we were like, our parents wanted to know when something was broken, who's responsible? And we're like, oh, I don't want to be responsible. That type of thing, we'd avoid that. But it's just about, I'm going to take control of my life and, and make the choices. Now, some things we have control over. We can choose to do this or to do that. Other times, we don't. That many things like, you know, we can't make choices for our children or our partners or different things like that. But we also have the choice of how we respond. And humans are meaning-making machines. You know, you and I could both go and see a movie. And we walk out and I go, that was awesome. And you're like, no, it's rubbish. So was the movie good? Was the movie bad? The movie is just a movie and life is just life. But we decide what's good and bad in that type of way. And we can decide how things are. Now, we know that fennel is really great for the digestive system, especially if you get cramps, like unusual cramps. You're like, oh, that hurts. That's where I love fennel, either in sparkling water with a bit of grapefruit or rubbed on the belly with some fractionated coconut oil. But how oils work physically, they also work metaphysically. So they help us to digest things. Think about when we're out of control. Maybe I go, oh, you're in trouble and I need to talk to you after this call. Ooh you'd get those butterflies in the belly and you'd feel disempowered. You start, oh, you know, kids that don't want to go to school because they're nervous about it. They're, oh, I've got a bellyache. Fennel gives us that power back. Now try it. This is a really odd blend. Play around with it. You may like it. You may go, I don't know what Adam was thinking. But try blending that with clary sage. A lot of the time when we're listening to our intuition or we think about our intuition or connecting with spirit and all that kind of thing, we think that it's got to come from out there. And if I can just get that, correct angel to tell me what to do or just say the right prayer and I'll get the right answer I want or just see that sign out there then I'll know what to do but that is is going on this idea that we're separate from the divine that we're separate from all that's a miraculous but we are part of that and so a lot of the time the answers we seek are within us has anyone here ever had a tarot reading or gone to see a clairvoyant or something and they walk out and go oh they just told me everything I already know that's actually a really good reading because that's confirmation of things you already know. Clary Sage helps us listen to the voice within. There's a Druidic saying that says, our conscience is the voice of God within. And I love that. We often know what we need to do, but we're taking on everyone else's you know, opinions, our parents, our partner, our kids, you know, societies and that kind of thing. And that's stopping us from doing what we want to do. And so fennel gives you back that power and clary sage gives you back that wisdom to do what you need to do. Now, I've noticed there's a couple of comments in, 
in the chat, which was, thank you for all the comments. We'll try and tackle as much as we can about fear. And I'm scared to go forward. So my, out of the entire doTERRA range, my favorite oil for fear is definitely juniper berry. Juniper berry helps us to go into that cave of darkness and face those things that we're unwilling to do. But it's good to pair juniper berry with something else. The reason being, if I told you this whole week, I want you to focus on not eating chocolate. What do you reckon you'd focus on? I know what I'd be thinking about, chocolate. So if we're focusing on overcoming fear, guess what we're focusing on? The fear, the fear, the fear. So try combining it with another fruit oil, such as bergamot. Bergamot is amazing because it, ha it gives a real comfort. It's high in linalol, which is also in lavender. So whereas all the other uh, citrus essential oils like orange and grapefruit and tangerine are like, woohoo, kind of thing, bergamot is a bit more like, yeah, I'm chilled. It's a chilled out citrus kind of one. And so it gives us this comfort and it's really good for our self-worth. And it gets us back in action. You can put a bit of wild orange in there as well. And it helps to take, tackle those fears, but also move out of those fears as well. The best way I find to overcome a fear is not through working it through in our mind, but through just acting. Count to five and dive in and do it and that type of thing. And so find oils like the citrus oils that will really inspire you, maybe even put a bit of pepper or spearmint in there as well, um, or even a bit of basil and rosemary. Take your pickle, which one's kind of sing out to you, that push you forward, get you going forward, just like the Dutch Heroes Blend Motivate. All those kind of oils are like, let's go, let's do it. You can even try blending Motivate and Juniper Berry to overcome that fear, but don't think just about overcoming that fear. Think about the destination. It's impossible to look in front of yourself and behind yourself at the same time. We can't look at the fear of the past and where we're going in the future at the same time. So switch that around and work with those oils in that way. Vanessa. Here I am. I'm just muting every time you're talking and then just writing things in the chat. Okay, so Claire, you're the last one I was just writing about there. Let me just dive into this for a moment. So um, I was feeling with, with yours and obviously I'm just reading sentences and then just, you know, trying to tune in. And I just want to say to you guys, before I even go forward anymore, like Claire's written stress-free and confident, trust myself and my instincts. So if I was actually working one-on-one, -on -one, I wouldn't just provide the answers necessarily. This is something you can do for yourselves. Go on this little inner inquiry. Say, what would it look like for me to be stress-free and to feel confident? What does that look like and feel like for me? And what would that be like if I really just trusted myself and my instincts? What would that be like? How would that feel? And then for each of them, just say, which essential oils walk toward me as I tap into that? Which essential oils or blends are walking toward me? And trust that. This is the perfect place for you all to dip into that place of what, what is it for me that takes, you know, that takes me to that place of feeling all of these things. And it's probably not going to be anything like what I've just put forward. You know, and that's fine. Or maybe there is some overlay, but I just want to speak to a couple of the oils. So bergamot, we just need to take care. Remember, it's highly photosensitive or phototoxic. So when you're doing your aromatic dressing and going out in the sun, bergamot is not one you want to be putting on your skin, but to diffuse it or make a spritzer or like a little rollerball where you're, you know, maybe just putting it on your wrist or somewhere where your clothing's covering you, it's okay. If you have that really Celtic skin, translucent fair skin, just stay away from bergamot when you're going out in the sun. Yeah. Okay. So Claire, I, I felt for you, my darling, myrrh, rose, frankincense, green mandarin, and then this layering of whisper. I literally could just smell whisper coming in and then just anoint her wherever you feel her. You know, she's got some really high vibration oils. So myrrh takes us deep into that place of our own inner wisdom, inner knowing. She's that crone mama that comes in and says, honey, you know it. You know it. Don't you give your energy away to anyone else or your confidence. Don't just dash that to the wind because you know. And as you turn into that inner cave and you feel again, it's like this beautiful reunion with a part of us that we've neglected for a long time, Claire. And this is for all of you, my loves. 
You know, this is for all of you. But it's that that point we get to in our lives where we just need to reconnect and acknowledge that part of us that is still and knows. And they're just unconditionally waiting for us, right? <laughs> to come back home to that place of knowing. And Rose, Rose working with Myrrh is that divine feminine energy, the sacred feminine. Feminine energy has a way of moving through life. She's about creation. She also reminds us of that gestation period that's needed for anything that we want to bring through into the world. That opening of the heart that Adam was talking about is the same opening that occurs in our sacred womb space. For women, it's easy to tap into this place. For men, it can be sometimes a little trickier because it doesn't come into their sphere as they're growing up this polarization occurs of women have wombs and men, well, they just have something else and women have cycles and men, well, whatever, you know, but we all have this sacred cycle. We all have these holding points in our body energetically because we're all one and we are all divine seeds. We've come from that same spark, right? So the myrrh and the rose take us to that place of remembrance, our heart space and deep, deep, deep in our belly, that gut instinct, that gut feeling that's spoken about. Frankincense, he comes in with this divine masculine energy and there's, there's a wisp of that coming through and whisper as well with that Hawaiian sandalwood. And he just reminds you to breathe. You know, when people talk about ascension and illumination and enlightenment, I often wonder, do, does anyone ever stop and wonder and ask, just come into stillness and say, what do those words mean for me? It's not about 2020 taking us into a whole other way of being because of 2020 itself. It's because something in humanity has arisen. Something in us has prayed for long enough for change, for transmutation of all of this fear, for the transcendence of where we have been into a new place of being. Human beings right now are yearning for, hungering for, praying for the return to love. And for us to come back to that place, we need to face that which lies in the shadows, in the darkness. Where Juniper Berry takes us, it's also where Myrrh takes us. Because the crone mama, she says, own it all. See it all and own it all. It's part of the glory of who you are. The green mandarin brings the joy as we rediscover ourselves, as we transcend, as we, as frankincense helps us to embrace our own magnificence, to remember the truth of who we are, right? If you imagine with frankincense, it's like getting in an elevator and pushing the button of the penthouse suite, woof, going straight there. But you know what? It could be a bumpy ride on the way. We could lose our tummy a little on the way. Like, you know, we're going up and then whoop, we come down a little and, you know, that ride upwards and outwards can have us feeling some stuff, you guys. Be not afraid because the divine is always our companion and look to the great mother to be a companion with you. And the great mother is Mama Gaia, Mother Nature, whatever you want to call her. Yeah. So allow yourself to go there with joy. And that's why I love the, the green mandarin coming in there. We need some of that maiden energy, green mandarin or lang ylang you know, which is in the whisper, right, Claire? The lang, -lang comes in there. So um, I have popped some other blends up there as well. Um, Kareen, the bergamot, fennel, wild orange, cinnamon bark and turmeric and layer with magnolia. So m predominantly I'm talking about you can diffuse these, you know, smell them in the lids, but really I want you to get a bowl with your carrier oil, fractionated coconut oil, Whatever you like, you can blend carriers. If you've got some beautiful jojoba oil or some sweet almond or apricot kernel, add a little bit. You know, we have a powerful carrier with yarrow palm. 
right? Yarrow has so much bliss in its chemistry, so much bliss. And one of the, one of the gifts is a yarrow can act as this really powerful analgesic. Let's look at that in the spiritual realm, in the emotional realm. What is it that I could just do with just working with the pain of that right now so that I can step forward and see clearly in the world, right? Because pain takes up an inordinate amount of energy in our body. Our body works to help clear that pain. Our emotional body, our spirit body, our mental body can also become overwhelmed by it or consumed by it. So the yarrow comes in to help dissolve that, to help move that through, right? Analgesic doesn't just mean numbing and blanketing it in the plant kingdom. It's, okay, how can we relieve it? How can we clear it out? Yeah? So add some yarrow palm into the fractionated coconut oil before you do your, your aromatic dressing, if, if that relates to you, if any of that sang to you. Um, so Corrine, that magnolia coming in, again, like, like um, the energy of Mersh, she comes in with that crone mama energy. And it doesn't matter if you know when you're being crone, you know, that, that perimenopause or menopausal time. It's not about that. It's more about her reminding you not to sweat the small stuff. Like that this too shall pass. Frankincense to me, I always hear with him, this too shall pass. But with Magnolia, she's like, you know, no doubt, girl, guy, child, woman, man, no doubt about it. This ain't going to last forever. And all this hooly dooly fuss you're making over it, it's for nothing. It's for nothing. You're just wasting your energy to so step out, step forward, rise into the king or queen that you are. Own it again own it again. Um, Adam, I can't keep up with everything on the chat. Um, if you can just keep an eye, but I just want to say, Kareen, those other oils that have come in, you've got a lot. It's, I've just realized it's all foodie oils that have come in. The food oils help us to digest life, to digest life, to digest that which feels um, indigestible. So see where that, see where that lands for you. Okay. Adam, did you want to add anything else? I'm, I'm trying not to take up too much time. I've got about yeah, five. No. We, we've got just a few more minutes left together. So I'd love to know that in our remaining two minutes together, are there any oils, maybe the one that you intuitively reached for when Vanessa did the guided meditation or one that keeps coming up that you're kind of like, I don't know why I'm drawn to that. Maybe pop that in the chat and we'd love to, possibly share a bit of insight on that as well. While you're doing that, I just wanted to kind of summarize and we've kind of danced around um, this idea that our book is divided into those five elements and that it's from the, five, the parts of the plant. So overall, if you were looking for more grounding and working with that earth element, a bit more stability, prosperity, support, and that type of thing, you want to be working with any oils that come from the wood, the bark, the roots or the rhizomes. So that's our earth element. Now, if you're looking for opening up and for love and trust and emotions and all that type of emotional healing, that's where we're working with the water element and any oil that is gifted to us from a flower. So from our roses to our lavenders, geraniums and so on. Now, if it's about the mind and getting clarity of mind or focus of mind or opening the mind or anything like that, that's the element of air and that's our leaf oils. And that's the, the greatest portion of our um, you'll notice in our book, the leaf oils take up double the amount that all the other elements do just because so many leaf oils um, are within the doTERRA range. Now, if you're looking for transformation, connecting with your passion, that excitement, that vibrancy, that's the element of fire and that is all your fruit oils. So that's your citruses, your pink pepper, your black pepper, your litsia, uh, your juniper berry. Then if you're just really focusing right now on getting back to the core essence of who you are, your sheer power, what who you, who you are as an individual. That's where we work with that fifth element, which is known as, as Akasha or spirit. And the oils that resonate with this element are either the seed oils, back to our potentiality, or the resin oils. That's copa eva, frankincense, and myrrh. And so that's as, as a general. And obviously each of them has their own different note and tone within those themes. But that might be a bit of a guide of, oh, maybe... Maybe from what Adam said, the fruit oils might be best for me to dance around with it. I'll see what I'm drawn to in that type of way as well. So let's all, 
I'm going to talk a little bit about Black Spruce because there is footage of me floating around the internet of when Black Spruce was announced, um, of me getting just slightly excited, squealing like a pig, very much kind of thing. So I love Black Spruce. Why I love Black Spruce is any of the leaf oils that come from big trees help to open up our perspective. So when we, if we were to fly over a forest of black spruce, you'll actually see that the branches go out in these different directions and it almost creates a field or a forest of stars. And so at night, when we have this field of stars above us, mirroring down on the earth, on the crown of the planet up in Canada, we have a field or a forest of stars mirroring that. I want you to think, and if you can do that this evening after this call, go outside, just look up at the stars. And you know how we remember that wonder? I'm like, wow, isn't this world just magical and amazing and that kind of thing? And that's a gift that Black Spruce gives us. It gives us wonder. It's wanting to connect back with that magic again. What I really love is Black Spruce is great for things like adrenal fatigue. And so what I've found, I've, you know, I'm guilty of overworking myself and Black Spruce has become one of my best friends. Because it says we don't have to be everything to everyone. Let's just get back to our own magic and what's magic in our life as well. Now, when I meditate with Black Spruce, the phrase that comes to me is the universe has my back. And if you look at the name of Black Spruce, its Latin name is Picia Mariana. And Mariana is a reference to Mother Mary. Black Spruce acts as this heavenly, celestial, supportive mother that whatever you're going to do, the universe has your back. You're supported. Remember the magic within you. Open up to the magic within you and understand how this world works and open your mind to that as well. As a side note, black spruce can actually enhance the understanding of mathematics, science, even sacred geometry, and all those metaphysics and that type of thing as well. So it's a really magical one. So if you're craving that, it would suggest to me that there's a real yearning to open back up and reconnect with the magic of life. And that may have been lost. So gorgeous, honey. All right. Well, we have, that's exactly an hour. We don't want to take your time much more than this. How you're feeling? Is that good? Mel, looks like you did lots of notes there, babe. <laughs> All righty. So wonderful. All right. Great, Courtney. Thank you. So um, thank you. Thank you with all our hearts for being here with us, for journeying this with us, for giving this book life. Share her. Share her in your classes, in your stories, on your Insta posts, in your Facebook. Tag Oil Life for people to buy her overseas and access her. She sold out in 36 hours in the UK and Europe. 36 hours. So we're just trying to get more there. So for those that are there we're sorry they're on their way i want to just share with you as we part one other way you can use her you can just hold a thought in your mind or a question and hold her in your your hands as you do this and then just open randomly like an oracle to whichever essential oil appears before you and then take a deep dive and you might want to explore just being with that oil for that week. Yeah, Adam and I run beautiful online courses and um, we're currently in the middle of a, of a 10 week course, our eight week course before this, one of the, the homework um, journeys that, that Adam gave one week, I love this was, he said, just explore one essential oil, have a monogamous relationship with it you know, and I'm atrocious. I'm like, oh my gosh, I must be so polyamorous in the essential oil world because I'm always wanting to blend them, blend them, blend them. But I can tell you this, when we just take that deep dive with that one oil that appears as we use her as an oracle, um, you go somewhere, you go to a whole new place with that essential oil. You hear things and feel things that maybe you didn't before, right? So let yourself go there. Let yourself journey deeply journey deeply so um blue lotus let me touch on for a second so black spruce adam was talking about with that beautiful wonder and connection with the stars and blue lotus takes you into those incredible adventures with and relationships with the beings in the stars 
star beings or your star seed self. We are all of the divine. It's all one. So <clears throat> it's time for humanity to remember their truth and to connect with their truth. So the angelic realm may be something you love working with, you know, these star beings, these beings of the stars with their wisdom, maybe something and blue Lotus can help in enhance that. Okay. So Adam's written a lot of stuff in there. Thank you, darling heart. All right. Check out our book. You can go deep with all of those oils you mentioned. They'll cover that. They'll, it will cover it extensively. She is a glory. She has a life of her own. Go deep with her. Thank you, Courtney, for putting the link. Um, you know, this is the gift. When you're looking for gifts to people, let her be a gift for people because she'll take them to a whole new place. And make sure you take a moment in the beginning of the book. There is a, there's a page there and it says Gaia Speaks. Have a listen. It's the only part of the book that was not edited at all because it came from a deep place of connection with Mama Gaia. Enjoy her, wrap your arms around her, stroke her often and much and keep her where you can see her. We love you guys. Thank you for your love and support. Thank you for being here with us and we will see you soon. Thanks. Thanks, Courtney. Bye everyone.